appear. Are you, is, is that, are you, are you hodling a shit coin? Really? But, but why? I don't get it. What, what, why would you spend your precious Satoshis to accumulate Ripple? Why, why do you need it? Why is it useful? What, what are the tasks that it solves? What are the problems uh, that, that this tool uh, can be of service? I don't get it. Um, because, well, there is, of course, the, the task to be done of performing uh, the tool of sound money, right? A scarce good that we can use to postpone uh, our gratification of desires, right? We can save, we can hodl with it. And we can, of course, exchange it then later uh, to buy something and exchange something that is uh, something that we desire, right? A consumption good or a production good. And of course, then we also use it to price our goods and services in uh, so that we can have a fluid and liquid exchange. So if that is, is our assumption, right, then Bitcoin fulfills all of them. Pretty, pretty damn good. Not perfect, of course, still lots to improve, but it's pretty good. And like, my main question is, why reinvent the wheel? We have a decentralized sound and Libre monetary-based system uh, that is based on fundamental good ethics uh, and good economics. So why would you do it all over again? Especially because it's not easy, not at all. I mean, the first digital currency came out in 1983. It failed. Yeah, because it's not easy. And most likely, <laughs> Just out of historical analysis as well, your shitcoin will fail as well, right? It's also quite likely that Bitcoin is going to fail. And well, but after a couple thousand uh, failed attempts, Bitcoin is pretty damn good, right? Uh, so I, I would say that it's, it's not that it's bad to work on a shitcoin. It's just not the task that I would, uh, or not the... Uh, not the task that I would dedicate my attention to because your time and attention is really scarce. Uh, you can only spend it at one place at a time and it is really rare, right? You have only 24 hours in a day, only 144 blocks. And this means that we, we really have to allocate uh, our time and attention to the most important uh, yeah, task. And especially when we already have a tool uh, that is pretty much finished, right? You, you don't have to change it that much more. It is already really usable. And of course, there's still improvements to come, but you can use it today as is. And then this means that you no longer have to build it, right? Others have done the task of building Bitcoin. And of course, you can do your part in that as well. But it's already here and you can use it. And this means that you no longer have to invest the time to build your shitcoin, but you can actually invest the time to be productive and do something uh, other than producing money. Because money production is a tiny, tiny, th tiny thing in the economy. Um, the economy at large is fundamentally based on a monetary system, right? Uh, and, and supported by it very much so. But you also have to have the other side of the trade. Right? Uh, someone has to produce uh, the, the goods and services that are being exchanged for money. And why would you not focus on that? Because I would argue that most likely uh, you are not in the top 1% of 1% of money producers, right? and especially not in something as complex as Bitcoin with, with all these uh, very nuanced subjects that you really have to be an expert in uh, to, to, to manifest here decent and, and good change. So... I, I would argue that most likely there is a niche in, in some other area other than money production, which you are marginally damn good at. And why would you not focus on this one skill, baking loaves of bread? I don't know. Uh, and then use Bitcoin, the tool that was already built, uh, to help you uh, be as efficient as possible with this task. Well, I don't know, but if every baker would first produce his own shitcoin and then go baking the bread, well, we would all starve, right? So I think it's, it's quite compelling to, to realize that why, or th that, it's, that it might be smart or, or efficient to uh, divide some tasks, right? And, and to let the specialists handle it uh, pretty much. And uh, it, it also is, is the case that the 
these specialists really know what they're doing and it's really, really complex. And the more complexity you introduce, the more uncertainty and risk you also introduce. So with every additional shitcoin, you introduce a bunch of complexity. And this means it's not going to be as secure, it's not going to be as usable, and it's not going to be as beautiful. So these are all aspects that are important to your goods and services and to your everyday life. So with introducing a bunch of shitcoins, it's going to get it more expensive. You're going to lose money eventually. Uh, and then, well, especially going to lose money because these shitcoins are easy to attack. They are not secure. They are not safe. Why? Because digital money is one of the most difficult tasks that humankind has ever come up with. And 99.99% .99 of all these shitcoins are not good enough to solve the problem. They just are not. And they will fail just like all the other centralized currencies have failed before. Uh, so I'm not saying that it's impossible, right? But we see with Bitcoin, it can be possible. And on some shitcoins are, are still working and, and, and doable. So, but the thing is that it's really difficult and we have experts focusing uh, on such a task, right? And they can focus specifically to make just this one monetary uh, ecosystem, just Bitcoin, as good as fucking possible. And when a lot of experts dedicate their time and attention uh, to the very nuances of Bitcoin, uh, then they will make it ever more delightful and thus uh, ever more usable and valuable. So. I, th I think when we focus on, on one monetary good, we can make it as good as possible. And therefore, we can sooner rather than later focus on the other tasks that we actually want to do, right? Uh, so and I think that is really a, a huge, huge aspect that you just don't have to deal with all the code and the clutter and, and all, the, all the nonsense that, uh, that all these uh, other shitcoins bring to you. Um, also, of course, is that the Bitcoin community is very growing a lot. And of course, we see this over the last 10 years, but I would say especially uh, recently, like not just on a technological side with, with additional developers coming in, but uh, also very much so with, uh, with users and with, with peers holding the currency, right? And then eventually exchanging it. So uh, it, it, really, it really shows that Bitcoin has a, a growing network effect. And just realize how, how powerful the network effect is. Because uh, if you have a shitcoin, Right? And there are, well, let's say, 100 people in there. And then you have Bitcoin. And there are, let's say, 1,000 people in this network. Uh, what happens if one individual from the shitcoin uh, group leaves and goes to the Bitcoin on money advocates? Well, this means that the, the value, uh, the, the Metcalf's law value, the, the maximum amount of, of channels, so to say, in this network uh, just got halved. The network is half as valuable now, the shitcoin network. But the Bitcoin network just got twice as valuable. So network effects are exponential, very much so. And with already such a strong trend and with somewhat understanding how exponentiality works out, uh, although we can't really come up with that, but uh, it is a very growing network effect. And I think these are just a couple of reasons uh, why I would say that it is just so logical uh, to go Bitcoin only and to make sure that you focus on the task which you are marginally best at and let other specialists handle these other tasks. Um, and again, I, I don't want to bash shitcoiners for being shitcoiners because again, they do it voluntarily, right? And, and that's awesome. And, and I love uh, free voluntary choices because they prove that it's mutually beneficial. So these shitcoiners, right, they get something out of being a shitcoiner. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Um, and thus, I, I don't want to bash you, uh, and, but rather, I, I just like to state my uh, theories here on why Bitcoin is enough and why we have already solved the problem somewhat, and we can move on to the next problem. We don't have to reinvent the first problem, which we've already solved. Uh, so what we have here is the beautiful website, bitcoin-only.com, uh, and you can uh, link in the description, of course. And I think it, it's, it's a great place of, of condensing all the important knowledge uh, of Bitcoin uh, really easily and without any clutter, again, focused, right? Uh, so here in the, in the main menu, we see that there, there are 12 different um, yeah, areas of inquiry. And I think we, we can take the time uh, to, over the next couple of days to talk about uh, some of them, maybe all of them, uh, and, and kind of look through of, of how Bitcoin 
comes up here in, in these categories and and what what tools are at your disposal uh, that maybe you didn't even know about so that includes something like uh, wallets right how you how do you take care of keys and and your hardware right uh, of course also developer tools or, or store tools so what what are the the tools that are actually behind um, Bitcoin that uh, that help you uh, in your path of, of understanding it um, or no sorry of, of specifically applying um, this uh, this amazing tool. Uh, but of course, before you apply it, you need to learn it. And that is something that is really important. So we're also going to look into different resources where you can uh, learn about Bitcoin and um, be sure that you that you get a decent grasp of understanding it. Because only then can you truthfully apply it in your life and use this tool to remove uneasiness. So uh, this really is going to be not just a free-flowing uh, thought here of, of me on how we can allocate the scarce and limited time that we have as efficiently as possible uh, and in a way that we don't waste our time and attention. And I would just say that that, that is pretty much Bitcoin. Uh, we have somewhat solved sound money. <laughs> not saying it's perfect, but right, it's doable, right? It works. Uh, and now we can focus on the next stuff. And I think this really uh, is, is a nice page to sum this up. What do we have? What is the status quo? And where will it take us? And what can we do now with this? So over the next couple of days, I'm, I, I just invite you here to, to join the conversation and, and, yeah, and explore these, these thoughts and ideas. And again, I'm not bashing anyone. I'm just saying that I believe that we have solved the problem that we set out to solve. And yeah, let's try and make life a little bit more beautiful with the next problem that we can solve. Right. Uh, so, Piers, thank you very much here for joining me. Uh, and serious question, though. Do you have some shit coins? I, I would really be curious. So uh, leave a comment in the description below of if you are actually Bitcoin only uh, and uh, how you got there. So, again, this is going to be a communicative. So please be active in the chat and, uh, and in, the, in the comment section and let, your, let me know your opinion. Okay. Thank you very much. And see you on the next show. Bye-bye.